if a course is not accredited and they're busy teaching you that particular course, it's an indictment on the on the department its own and the HOD and the director of that particular school because you should not offer or sell something that is not accredited. It will not be recognized because it's unofficial. So, you know, get more information before you start accusing an institute of having unaccredited courses because I don't think people will just sit and because even you as a lecturer, I mean, how will you be happy that you are busy with a course that is not accredited? Friends, this is Dr. T. Thank you for joining me today. I'm going to speak about uh, a topic that, well, it's not such an exciting topic to me. I'm just doing this because uh, of UNISA students. UNISA students, they ask a lot of curriculum questions. They ask me about how do I know whether a course is accredited, whether a particular course is accredited, credits, how many credits a course has. I don't know. I really, really don't know why UNISA students ask these questions. <laughs> I used to study at UNISA as well. And I never used to worry about whether a course is accredited or whether how many credits are there. Because you register for a program and they've got courses that you have to do for that particular program in order to meet the requirements. So I don't know, maybe things have changed now. Please, people from UNISA, open my eyes, share, tell me, why are you so much concerned about credit, whether courses are credited and all of that? I mean, some of you, you are at first year, you're already concerned about whether courses are credited at UNISA or <laughs> about the credits. <laughs> I think you guys, you guys can be curriculum specialists. The question that you ask, I, I'm really, now when I was at UNISA, we're more concerned about going through that hill, up there and sweating on that hill. Not credit and all that. <laughs> anyway, let's get to the gist of today. UNISA students, I love you so much. I love you. It's not easy to be a UNISA student. I love you so much. Actually, I've done a video for you. I want you to watch this video. <laughs> I've done a video for you. Check it out. Uh, on the video, I speak about uh, is distance education good for you? So check that video out because when I did it, I was actually thinking about the UNISA student because I studied there and I was there when I was doing my honors and I realized you need to be at a different frame of mind to be able to study at UNISA. That is why uh, you find that sometimes people don't complete on record time uh, when they study there, there's a reason and that video I share that so check the video out It will help you but it will also help those who are planning to do distance education So check that video out. I love you so much UNISA student But I want to speak to you about to help you because I don't know why you are so much into accreditation and whatever and credits now the issue of credits should not be so much a concern, you know credits basically they speak about the notional hours, how much time you need to dedicate to a particular course for that particular year or until you complete it. So when you see a credit of 120, you multiply 120 by 10 because one credit equals to 10 notional hours. So we use that as educational psychologist or student support or academic support uh, uh, staff or specialist. We use the notional hours to be able to guide people on time management, how to dedicate to their course, how to study their course. So I don't know how you use them at UNISA, but that's actually what the credits tell me. They tell me about the credits. Obviously, when you want to change a course and all that, uh, that's when you can also get into them because you want to get accreditation or accredited rather for a particular module. But ideally, if you stick within your program, you will not have to be switching between different courses. Unless you are changing courses, you fail this one, you move around, then that is a challenge that I think that video might also help you because you need to stand to, to remain within that particular program. It is tailor-made to make it easy for you because somebody has said there 
a curriculum specialist or a lecturer has combined those particular modules for a reason so you want to move them around and you cause confusion in terms of your career articulation so the challenges might be made by you by changing modules within a particular program than the standard one which has been given usually they'll give you these are the core ones and then you can select select from what they've given you don't just come with your own mixture mixture that causes challenges and one of the easiest way to do that every course every course for example if you're in psychology if you check HPCSA, the accreditation document of programs like b psych for example they will show you what modules are important for b psych so if you are choosing a program you can actually choose in such a way that you align to the b psych program so that by the time you finish your honors in psychology or you finish your degree uh, if you have not done a b psych qualification at least you can become accredited obviously accreditation has got limit you can't go beyond the 50 percent of the program that you want to get into but at least you know you can get as much as 50 percent accreditation into that particular field so that's basically in terms of the credits but what i want to focus on today i want to focus on how to check if a qualification is accredited because i think that's where most of your issues are before i get into that as usual make sure if you have not yet subscribed to this channel make sure that you subscribe to the channel by clicking on the subscribe button at the bottom of this video click on the subscribe button give it a thumbs up if you like it and if you have got any question based on this video or any other video that you are watching on this channel make sure that you put your question below on the comment section but even if there's no question you just want to comment uh there's something you like about the video put it down there because your feedback helps me to understand the 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 the, the, the you know what you like and the things that you want me to know i'm doing this video mainly because i interact a lot with uh unisa people on my facebook page so but we can do it better here because i'm here most of the time that on my facebook so put the comments there if there's any topic that you want to hear about put it down there and i'll be able to attend to it if there's anything that you feel like you want me to elaborate on mention that as well in the comment section and i will be able to attend to it i've also done certain videos that you can check that will help you one of the videos that i've done i help those who are in the field of psychology who might want to pursue a career in psychology particularly those who have done in honors uh i i've had a lot of people speak about honors in psychology and some of them you know there's some negativity around it maybe because people have not been selected for masters there's some form of negativity towards the honors so i've made a video just to encourage anybody who has got an honors in psychology so if you have got an honors in psychology watch that video watch other videos i've done other videos as well related to them but watch that particular video it will help you understand how to articulate from that honors to any other field that you want to go to but also to think differently about your honors qualification i've also done another one this is particularly for those who are in honors and they want to get into masters or they've applied for masters and they've not been selected so i have done this video in order to help you so that you can easily get selected into masters or at least prepare yourself to get into masters in psychology these are not the only videos i've done i've done a lot check on the channel there's one that i've done where i speak about how to deal with uh rejection from uh, admission particularly if you are not admitted to honors you are not admitted to masters how to deal with that so i give you some form of closure because some of you applied for honors you applied for masters you never got any feedback i share with you what could have led for you to you not being selected i share about that but i also have part two of it where i speak about the mitigating factors what you can do to prevent not being selected uh for masters or for honors so i give you practical example that you can follow to ensure that when you apply next time or also to give you hope that you must apply i always encourage people if psychology is what you want to what you want to pursue as a career you believe you can be a psychologist or you want to become a psychologist there's nothing that should stand on your way whether selection whether lecturer nobody should stand on your way of becoming a psychologist never give up on your journey i believe that 
if you believe you can be a psychologist and you put time and effort on it, eventually it will happen. Eventually it will happen. And I want to tell you, don't give up in becoming a psychologist. I'm a psychologist myself. I've been in the field, I think, now over a decade now as a psychologist. And I can tell you, I've never regretted having followed this particular profession. So if you can become a psychologist, I don't know any psychologist who struggle with getting a job. I don't know. If you know one, please connect them with me. <laughs> please connect them with me. So we don't have job issues. I'm actually working with a TVET college. We are employing psychologists at TVET colleges. And I think that's my mission. For the next uh, five years, I want to dedicate to ensure that TVET colleges have got psychologists. Because I saw the gap. And I saw that they can get help. Internship in particular. I know psychology now they are changing. They want to make sure that institute they offer internship. It might be a bit of a challenge, but I think financial wise, it was good to employ interns at TVET colleges. But I'm also sort of uh, giving them ideas about how to employ psychologists in TVET colleges, particularly educational who want to be in TVET colleges. Psychologists are almost in every higher institute. So when you're a psychologist, you don't only have to work at a school, hospital, whatever. You can be in higher education. That's where I am. And I think it's a very good space for those who want to work in higher education. Whether clinical, counseling, research, any field, you know, you can work in higher education. Because HR, industrial, they work there. Administrative, they are there. Counseling are there. Uh, everybody, research are there, whether in academia or in any research division. All psychologists can work in higher education. So make sure that you position yourself uh, to work in any of those fields. So make sure that you, you watch those particular uh, uh, videos. So let's get into this. How can you check whether a qualification has been approved? I, I did another video where I spoke about uh, sites where you can do, uh, uh, which are accredited to study psychology. And I remember I did that video. Check it out as well while I speak about the different sites where you can study psychology. On that video, I show the different sites. Uh, you can check it out. I did a video on that. So check out that video. These are the sites that you can get. But I wanted to just give an example because I wanted to use this as to guide you. For example, one of the institutes that is mentioned there is the Cornerstone Institute. And they are saying that it has been uh, accredited for Bachelor of Art Honors in Psychology. Uh, remember, I spoke about HPCC accrediting, uh, what do you call it, the B-Psych and the B-Psych equivalent. And uh, I think in that video, I explained the difference between the two, what HPCC accredit and what uh, CHE uh, accredit. So... Sometimes information that they give is because of the CHE equivalent. But let's say I want to check their honors in psychology, if it's accredited. So let's say I met UNISA, I'm doing an honors, I want to check if that honors is accredited. What do you do? You go to the SACWA website. So this is the SACWA website. So you go to the SACWA website, that's where you check accreditation. You don't need to wait for an HOD in psychology, whatever. You can do this on your own. As long as you've got the name of the course and then you've got the course code or the unit code. When you get to the SACWA, come here where it's written services and choose the first option, registration of qualification and part qualifications. When you click there, it will open another window. You still come on all qualifications and unit standard. You've got two options, either the full qualification or the unit standard. We want a full qualification. So you can paste that qualification there and you'll be able to check the qualification. Okay, it doesn't open. Uh, it could be that uh, it's not written correctly. Uh, let me go back. If I go back, I go back, I go back to that section again. So let me go back uh, just to show you. Okay, if it doesn't open, what you can do, you can come here and check by accreditation provider, accredited provider. Uh, I said it's a, what is the name of that institute? Cornerstone Institute. 
so cornerstone institute what we do we check uh cornerstone so i can actually just click the name of the institute here here it is cornerstone institute there you go cornerstone institute so i can now search the institute and when i go to the institute it will show me the different program that exists within that particular institute and you can see here is the cornerstone institute the originator the one that i was looking for it should be about nq level 8 because it's an honors uh here it is bachelor of art and here's the qualification uh id so if you have the id it will actually make it easy so you can see I was writing it, but the way I was writing it, I had uh, brackets. Maybe that's what made it uh, difficult for me to find it. So let's say I have the name and I'm putting the name there. Let me see if I will be able. Let me remove this. Uh, let's say I don't have. No. I just have the name. So you see, when you have the name, it actually opens it and it can actually give you the different uh, institute that actually offer that particular program that also originated their own program. So you can see the Cornerstone Institute is here. So I've just put the name. But I think the most important one is the ID. I think if you are at UNISA, I think if I remember correctly, they also provide you with the course ID so that you can be able to check and what you are able to do you are able to also when you are there you can actually then open the program and see more information about it so you can do that check more information about it you can check about uh, description of the course exit level outcomes uh, other programs actually have got further information they tell you which other institute have actually that qualification registered that's as simple as that how you check whether qualification has been uh, accredited or registered or the other thing that i forgot to show you uh, i need to show you this you will see uh, maybe let me go back to that page you will see the primary or delegating quality assurer is the chE so programs are accredited by CHE. So don't look for psychology board. Psychology board, uh, they also uh, approve programs that aligns to health professions council. Uh, so they will not uh, necessarily appear there. I think there's actually a section uh, where they show them. Uh, you can see all this information come from the higher education qualification sub framework and they show you the accreditation uh, uh, Council so that's the most important part that you need to know because uh, Every program at higher education should be accredited by CHE Every program should be accredited by CHE. So a program might not necessarily be uh, approved by HPCSA because it might it's not health profession that is why you call it academic uh, but we say it is not a professional qualification it does not lead to a prof professional registration so but that is how you check whether a program has been accredited or not so don't struggle the minute you have a module name or a program name the minute you have got the id you can put the id put the name or check by the institute you'll be able to identify whether the program has been accredited the other thing that you can do when you use this system for people who don't know it sometimes a program can 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 the registration can end you will see on that thing it also has the end date of a registration there's an interim period that they give you where you can actually re-register the program so sometimes you might be checking and it's during that program during that time so also go to you can also go to SACWA directly or speak to them and confirm or go to your HOD if you really want to confirm whether something is accredited. And there's also 
sometimes it's not yet updated usually i think with saka they're supposed to update over 24 hours but maybe there might not be an update so double check there don't just see one day like you saw with me i couldn't get the course from that particular uh, uh, uh institute until i started to you know use the name of the institute other institute merged and they demerged and during the demerger accreditation remained with another institute but you find the other institute are still offering so that those technicalities that you need to also clarify because there might be that transition period that has been given so check that that's how you ensure that a program has been accredited so it's not something that should be troubling you on how do i find it out it's not a secret anybody can confirm whether program has been accredited or not i hope that helps you and it will clarify whatever question that we have regarding accreditation now you can do it at your own time anytime you can check about accreditation thank you friends and if you have not yet subscribed i encourage you that subscribe share this video with as many people as possible who might need to know about accreditation how it works how to check so that you no longer have the struggle of whether a qualification has been accredited or not i love you and enjoy the rest of your day continue living a fulfilling life